Okay, I'm up here in a patch of milkweed. You can see, got a whole mess of milkweed here. Milkweed is a wild edible, uh, but not in its raw state. In fact, in its raw state, it's actually toxic. Cattle have died from eating it. I'll show you how to process it. It's really simple to process, and it's really delicious once you get it. Um, milkweed has, it's a single stemmed, it does not branch, uh, plant that comes up. And uh, when you take off the end, you'll see that it has that milky sap. And those are the two things that you need to know. Now, there are two kind of lookalikes. I don't think they are. Oh, and the other thing is that the leaf has a kind of a fuzzy texture to it. And those are the only two things you really need to know. By the time you're harvesting them at this stage with the flower, it's very easy to tell milkweed because that's that's the milkweed flower. Nothing looks like that. But there are two somewhat lookalikes that are mildly toxic, meaning if you eat them, if you're sensitive to them, they can do damage. But other than that, you're not going to feel good from eating them. And one of those is butterweed, butterfly weed, butterweed, there you go, butterfly weed, and the other one is dogbane. Butterfly weed does not get the milky sap, and dogbane is a branch. It has, it is, doesn't come straight up on a stalk. It has branches. And I can show you, uh, well, I got some dogbane over on the other side that I can show you. So, uh, anyway. Milkweed can be eaten in three different stages. When it's really small, when the leaves are still kind of, I'm going to put this down here, put it back to nature. Uh, when the leaves are, when the, the plant is small and the leaves are still kind of tightly, tight around the uh, plant. None of these are, even this one here, that's a little one, even that one's probably a little too big. Second stage you can eat is the flowers themselves. And the third stage is right when the little, the flowers will make a bud or what's often called a, a pod, and those are, I, I pickle those, I actually pickle them just like I do uh, cucumbers and eat them that way, but they can be cooked in the same manner that I'm going to show you. Now the flowers can be eaten when they're tight like this, when they're almost open, or when they, when they get a little bigger, when they get a little bigger yet, or when they actually open. And you can see there's the, it has those beautiful little flowers. Now when you're collecting um, milkweed, you should collect only one bunch of flowers from each uh, plant. That way each plant can still put to seed and you still have, there's still plenty of, um, you know, you're not destroying the plant or taking its entire generation away. You're just taking one, um, one bunch away. But, um, I'm going to collect a few of these and I'll take you back home and show you how to cook them. We cook them in what's called the two pot method and I'll show you that when we get there. Uh, the reason you have to cook it is because this latex that comes out of this and that's what that white is. It is pure latex. It is obviously toxic. Nobody wants to eat latex. <laughs> uh, the U.S. government actually tried growing it for the latex back in World War II to harvest it back when rubber was something we didn't have a whole lot of back when we had to ration out rubber even for tires for cars um, so it is uh, that's pure latex as it stands now it's not good for you but I'm going to collect uh, some of these flowers I'm going to collect this one right here and it's very simple I just snip it off with my fingernail now your hands are going to get all sticky it happens and I'm going to collect a few of these and I will meet you back in the kitchen in just a little bit Okay, we're down here in a patch of dogbane. This is actually on the side of a hill that's too steep for uh, tractors or anything to go, so this place has always been left alone, so that's why we have dogbane here. And dogbane, the reason people say dogbane looks like milkweed is because when you break off a piece of dogbane, you get the milky white sap. But if you actually look at dogbane, it doesn't look anything like um, milkweed. It branches, first of all. You can see as a, as a plant, it branches out quite a bit. The leaves are pretty smooth. The stem is extremely smooth. Um, and when we get to flowers, let's take you up to one that's got a flower on it. Here's the flower of the dogbane. And they're very bell-like. Don't look anything like the milkweed. So as long as, like I said, with the milkweed, you, you, you check and if you got this branching going on, 
don't eat it. It's not milkweed. Uh, dog bane is toxic. Most of the time it's not going to hurt you, or it's, I shouldn't say it's not going to hurt you. It is going to hurt you, but it's not going to kill you. It's just not going to make you feel very good. Uh, dog bane is a poison uh, that's called dog bane because uh, dogs have been known to, while eating grass, ingesting a little bit of this, and it does make them very sick. Uh, small body dogs can be killed by it. But uh, for us, most human beings just get not a pleasant, not, they don't have a good day, basically, when they eat it. But it's very simple to tell the bat the difference. It's, it's that branching. You can see the branching. And I don't have any butterfly weed here. I got some on another part of my uh, farm, but I'm not going to drive all the way over to show you that. But anyway, uh, butterfly weed, the difference is, is when you break off the thing, when you break off the, a leaf, you don't get the milky sap. So, uh, if you break off, if you have a something that's got a straight stalk, no branches, you break off the stalk, or you break break off the, the whatever, and it's got um, a milky sap, and it's got a, a bit of fuzziness to it, the leaves and the stem, you got milkweed. It's not that big of a deal. And if you know what a milkweed flower looks like, neither dogbane or uh, butterfly weed looks like milkweed their flowers don't so by the time you get to the collecting the flower stage you don't have to worry at all so anyway back to taking you back in to cook up so the milkweed. So I brought my blossoms back in uh, my milkweed blossoms and if you look you can kind of see that I've got all different phases some of them are you know in bud some of them are still more green I like to have the little v variation I think it's it gives a different texture to each of them. And then what I've got going here, I've, I've got two pots of bo water coming to a boil. No salt to these as of yet, just two pots of water coming to a boil. And the reason for this is because you cannot, cannot, cannot put cold water onto this until it's done cooking or you set the latex and you don't want to do that. We're going to boil the latex out of it. So the water has to be boiling. So what we're going to do is we got two pots going and these are the two uh, ways of this is just getting rid of the latex. So we're going to boil off the latex for one minute in this pot. Then we're going to strain them out through a strainer in the sink. Then we're going to no wa cold water on those at this point. Then we're going to drop them into this and boil this for another minute while we reheat heat this water back up. And then we'll put it in and finish the cooking process, which is about five to seven minutes in this, in the final or the third boil. And that sounds like a lot of work, but it's, these are actually very good. If you've ever had them, they're definitely worth the effort. Uh, it's free food, and all you got to do is just have three pots of boiling water. We're going to do it in two pots, but we'll get uh, one, two, and while this one's boiling, we're going to bring this one back to a boil, so this will be three. So we will have three. So it's one minute here, strain, get rid of this, this water because that water will have all the latex into it. One minute in this one, strain, again, get rid of that water because it will have the remainder of the latex in it. And then we'll drop it into boiling water again. And this will be boiling salted water, which is up to you if you want to do that. Uh, and that will be what we cook the, uh, the buds, the flowers in for about five to ten minutes, I usually say about seven. So I see it's boiling here, so I'm going to get these in and get them cooking for about one minute. And that's to get rid of the initial bunch of latex in there, the main bunch. Okay, got you guys on your tether. And I'm going to, uh, you have to, when you're outside, before you bring these into the house, just pick over it. You're not the only one that's going to like these things. There's a lot of bugs in them, too, so you're going to pick them over outside, but don't try to rinse the, bu the bugs off because you certainly do not want to uh, um, do that. You don't want to get any cold water on them. And if there's any bugs on them, I'm sorry to say they're going to be killed right at this point when you put them into boiling water. And this will brighten. They'll turn bright green. The, their colors will just brighten right up here. And like I said, we do it for about a minute. Bring it to a boil for about a minute. Boil this for a minute. I'm going to take it over, dump it out here. You're going to see a lot of green water coming out of that. And then I'm going to take this. Definitely not going to rinse it off. I'm going to put more water into that so we can get that boiling. Whoop! Hello. I want this water boiling. Turned it down just a little bit so that uh, we get it boiling again. And then we'll. 
put that back into there. I'm going to just kind of rinse this pot real quick before I put more fresh water into it. Then I, then I put more fresh water into this. I rinse that pan out, put more fresh water into it. We're bringing that up to a boil again. This is taking the last of the latex. This is just to make sure you got the last of the toxins out. And you're going to see the water is going to be pretty green in this too. Uh, I should have shown you the green water, but that's, you'll notice it when you dump it off. I need more than one camera. I need a camera at every station. <laughs> but even now you can kind of, I don't know if you guys can, but the water in here has a greenish color to it, and that's the last of the latex boiling off. Let me put you back because we're... Okay, when you start seeing the second one, or the third and final boil bubble, it's basically because it was a bit hot on my hands earlier. When you start seeing the, the third and final uh, one just start to bubble, you can take this off. You're done with this, so you can turn your heat source off. And you strain that. Done with that pan. And now I'm going to salt this water just a little bit. And I'm going to put that in there. Oops, that would make a mess. And now we're just cooking it. Um, and that, we're going to let this cook for about, probably about five to ten minutes, depending on uh, what, um, how much you have. I'm going to make it seven minutes. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's my compromise between the five and the ten minutes. I'm going to go to seven minutes. So be back in just a little bit and show you when I take it out. Okay, so this is boiled for about seven minutes. I'm going to turn it off, take it over, strain it, and I'll bring you right back over here and we'll plate it up for you. Now for me, the uh, flavor is a cross between green beans and uh, broccoli. So, and I'm sorry, people, I know this makes me the weirdo here, but I like very simple flavors. So for me, I'm just going to add a little butter for this for my dinner. Um, that's, that's a little fresh homemade cream butter here, sweet cream butter. Sweet cream is always better than sour cream butter, but for me anyway, I like sweet cream butter better than sour cream butter. But anyway, this is fine for me. If you like, think of how you like to serve broccoli. However you like to serve it. If you want to put it in a casserole, if you want to serve it with cheese on it, however you want to serve it. And if you never had it before, I suggest trying it just because it is so good and a lot of people will try wild edibles like they'll read about cattail roots and they'll eat cattail roots and they're like, oh, I hate wild edibles, they're gross, and so they'll never eat them again. This is one that actually most people, if you served it to them in a fancy restaurant, they'd eat it. They think, oh, that's pretty good. But uh, anyway, free food from the wild. Uh, the only main thing you have to do is don't touch it with cold water. And after that, it's fine. Now I'm going to sit here and munch. First I'm going to swallow this. And I'll tell you, I'm going to sit here and munch on this for my dinner. So, anyway, give it a try. That is milkweed blossoms. You need them when the milkweeds are very small and still the leaves are still curled up. Cook it the exact same way, the three-pot method, or the two-pot method, but three times. Or you can eat the pods before they start actually developing seeds, when they're just first forming. You can eat them or pickle them, and but you still have to boil them in the three pots again just to get rid of the latex. And then you put them into a pickling solution. That's pretty good. So uh, I'll let you go. But that is milkweed blossom, free from the wild, free for your taking. Nature can deliver, especially this time of the year.